Okay, now a bit more about sine and cosine, and then introduce uh, one more uh, term, a new term, uh, called the tangent of an angle, or the tangent of theta. Now, if you recall, do we have, uh, here we have a right triangle. Uh, the vertical side is length y, the horizontal side is length x, and the um, hypotenuse is length r. And we call this angle right in here, we'll call this angle theta. So this is angle theta right here. And the definitions uh, that we have been using is that the sine of theta, the sine of theta is equal to y divided by r. Cosine of theta is equal to x divided by r. Okay, um, and we also have the the new uh, uh, term is the tangent of theta, and the tangent of theta is given by y divided by x. Okay, so let me go over these again. Sine of theta. If this is angle theta, sine is opposite. That's opposite side divided by hypotenuse. And the cosine of theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is given by opposite side divided by adjacent side. That's x divided by y. So these are the three critical um, uh, trigonometric functions uh, that we introduce in geometry, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, now one thing that we have talked about, uh, we talked about it previously for a bit, is um, uh, a what's called a series approximation for the sine. And as I mentioned, this is what uh, computers use uh, to approximate sine. So here's what we have. Here's our diagram with uh, 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 with our angle theta. Okay, and we've defined by the what we have just mentioned. R cosine theta is equal to x, and R times sine theta is equal to y. We've also shown that R cosine of negative theta still equals x but r cosine of negative theta is equal to negative y. So the result of that is that sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta, and that cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of positive theta. Okay, now we talked about this series expansion right here. This is a series. Uh, we say that sine theta uh, is equal to theta minus theta cubed divided by 3 factorial plus theta to the 5th divided by 5 factorial minus theta to the 7th divided by 7 factorial. And the series continues on and has an infinite number of terms. When you look at the pattern in the series, you might guess that the next term here would be plus theta to the 9th divided by 9 factorial. The term after that would be negative of theta to the 11th divided by 11 factorial, and so on. Well, this series, this sum of terms, will converge to the value of sine theta. Now, as I mentioned before, is that this is not something we're going to prove here in this class. However, you will learn about it uh, when, you, when you do calculus. At least I hope you will. But what I do want to talk about is that for those of you who are taking basic language programming now, not processing, but basic language programming, we can write a basic program that will sum up this series and will then evaluate sine theta for us. So this is a basic program that does that. Now notice we're going to take advantage of a certain number of characteristics of this series of terms. One is that all the powers of theta that appear are odd powers. Here's theta to the seventh, theta to the fifth, theta cubed, and then this would be theta to the first power. 
So all the powers of theta that appear in the series are odd powers. And all the factorials are odd terms. 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial, and so on. So we can use that to help us write the program that evaluates that sum. And uh, so here is uh, here are the, the, the statements in the program. I'll let you see them. However, my suggestion is that, again, if you're taking basic language programming, that you um, enter this series of statements into a basic language program and check it for yourself. But I will briefly describe what some of the terms do. Okay, the first thing we do is set sum equals zero. Sum is the variable that we're going to accumulate the, the sum of all these terms as we go along. Okay, now the way it's going to work is, for example, uh, when sum, uh, the value of sum is equal to, the, to the, 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 the sum of these two terms, that is theta minus theta cubed divided by 3 factorial, the next thing we're going to do is take this value of sum and add this term to it. Then when the value of sum is equal to these three terms uh, together, added together, then we will add to that value this term and so on. So we'll see how that works. So the first part of the program is you enter the angle in radians because please remember that this series only converges to the value of sine theta if the value of theta is given in radians. It doesn't work if the value of theta is given in degrees. So the input statement in the basic language program is to enter the x. x will be the angle. Okay, Enter the value of x in radians. And then we input the number of terms in the sum, k. So, for example, is k just going to take the first two terms, or will it take the first three terms, or four terms, or so on? So this will determine how many terms we have in the sum. Then we have this variable called sine. The value, sine will alternate between having a value of plus 1 and negative 1. The value of sine is what puts the proper sign in front of the, each term. So in this case, we want sign to be negative. In this case, we want sign to be positive. In this case, we want sign to be negative. So the value of sign is going to alternate between plus and minus 1. And then we have the factorial terms. Okay, the first term is that 1 factorial is equal to 1. As we can think of theta as being theta divided by 1 factorial. That is, so 1 factorial is 1. And we're going to set our initial term factorial, which will keep track of 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial, and so on. We're going to set the value of factorial equal to 1. So now we execute the, the, uh, the sum, and we do it with a for loop. We have the value of k, which tells us how many terms we're putting in. Okay, so we for i equal 1 to k k could be 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then we set n equal 2 times i minus 1. What is this doing for you? When i is equal to 1, 2 times i minus 1, the value of n is 1. But when i is equal to 2, the value of n is 3. When i is equal to 3, the value of n is 5. Okay, what is this doing? Notice that the terms in the sum are 3, 5, 7, and so on, so that n here, this variable, keeps track of those odd numbers. So then we add up the terms in the sum. The value of the new value of sum is equal to the old value of sum plus sine times x to the n divided by factorial. So that's how we compute sine times x to the n divided by some value factorial. So this is how this program uh, executes that sum. And, um, and, and it executes it for all k values of i, accumulates the sum. Then we print out, we print out what we'll call the true value for sine x. That's using the sine program built into basic language. So we print out the true value of sine x and then we print out the series estimate for sine, which is going to be our variable sum. So I want you to go through this program, uh, try different values of k, 
and be comfortable that you understand how the program executes. Okay? Okay. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.